Well, one of the key issues of this election has been justice and also corruption. Joining me now to talk further about this is Eric Goldstein, who is from Human Rights Watch. You have been here throughout. You were here in January. You saw the protests. You've investigated crimes against human rights here in Tunisia. What do you think should be the priority for the Constituent Assembly going forward when it's elected? Well, today I think was an exciting day. It closes the first chapter, which began on January 14th. They made it to elections. The turnout was very impressive. It went very well. Now the hard work begins. The Constituent Assembly has many things. It has to write a new constitution and decide the orientation of the next Tunisian Republic. That's a huge job. They need to appoint a government in to, to govern until the elections for a legislative assembly take place. And they also need to deal with the cries for justice that are coming from the families of people 250 people were killed back in January. One of the unfortunate things is the justice system has really not begun to function in an independent way. The investigations into these killings has uh, gone at very slow pace, and people's, uh, people are hoping to see those held, uh, uh, those who are responsible for these killing at the highest levels held responsible, and that hasn't really started yet. So we know that Ben Ali is gone. He's in Saudi Arabia somewhere with his family. But do you think the remnants of the former regime still exist and are still present and will still be part of this new assembly, the new government, the new parliament? Well, some of them who are not implicated in, in uh, high-level crimes and are permitted to run for the assembly today. But I think the people of Tunisia think that those people are still lurking in the background and ready to come back and they won't be convinced that they've turned the page fully until some of those people are held accountable in fair and transparent trials. Why do you think uh, Tunisia has succeeded perhaps where we haven't seen the same success yet in other countries like Egypt uh, which is still struggling and also we've still got uprisings in other countries which haven't been fulfilled. Why has Tunisia succeeded where others have failed so far? Well, there are many factors. One is it's a homogeneous society. It's not riven by sectarian strife. It has a very, it has a relatively educated population, low levels of illiteracy. There is a, a long history of a union uh, movement, workers' unions, and civil society that it was able to function at the end, uh, despite the repression that it faced. And I think that there is a, a kind of a general consensus here that they see themselves as a moderate country, as a peaceful country, and the turnout today shows that they're, they're determined to try to make it work. Eric Goldstein, thank you so much for joining us on Al Jazeera, where around 10 months ago I was here uh, where protests were happening uh, and what happened here really paved the way for what we saw in Libya today, what we've seen in Egypt as well.